Hello everyone. Hope you hope you all have installed Unity Editor. Uh, so now let's get started with our first game. Let's roll our mad dice. Select the version of Unity you want to work with. Click on 3D. Give it a name. Next time I'm giving it as and select the location where you want to <coughs> create. Let's check what we are going to create. Mm, I'm going on my website, it's like this club club. And I'm giving to check board. So you can see it's a prototype game where if I pick a object, the score changes. If I pick the object of same color twice or multiple times without hitting another color, the score increases. And suppose I want 90 and I pick blue, the score decreases. That's what we are going to create in this tutorial series. Hope you will like it. The key points will be how you will able to control a ball. Uh, make prefabs or objects make, uh, which can be collected a mini map uh, some UI elements and scene loaders <coughs> cool how you need to add community has been downloaded I prefer to use this 2x3 layout. Uh, this is the C view where you will be able to see all the game objects which you are creating. Game objects are nothing but the component which are present in the scene. Uh, this is the game view where you will be able to see how your game will actually look when you will play it. And here you can able to play the game also in all your game. This is the hierarchy. Hierarchy is the place where you create the game objects. This is the project view or project folder where all your assets or each and everything which is present in your game will be stored. And this is the inspector. In inspector, we can change the properties of any game object we have created. Like, uh, the camera which has been pre-created by Unity. Uh, so if I will change let's suppose I want to change the background color. I want solid color color I like this. Boom, let's change. Let's try control that whenever you feel like you want to go there. Now let's get started with creating our first game object. Mm -hmm. I'll use a two here yeah. now. Give it some height. <coughs> Press Alt left arrow sorry left mouse button to move your cursor. Rotate it. And use hold to zoom in or zoom out.
Yes. Uh, to zoom in, instant zoom in, like you can focus on the real object with your selector if you press it. You can change to the scale or position of x, y, and z direction from the instructor also. Right, I want to make it 9.5. 1, 0, okay. And here, 10. Yes. Okay. So, if you want that, this is the point of it. Use control D to duplicate. And that was 9.5, so I suppose it will be minus 9.5. Control D. Okay. And then, 90 degree. Zero. One point five. Control D. Zero. Minus one point five. Let's keep the names, so it will be much easier for us to identify. Now I'm going to do this. Left one. That we can press F2 for the name. Right, all. You can name them anything. I'm going to create an empty game object named Worlds. And just select all the worlds and drag them and drop it. Before I drag, what I've seen, it was in space. Just click on reset and now it is in the origin. This will help us to organize our game objects. And we will further help in when we create some more complex objects. Now let's create a new folder for our As you can see, all the wall and ground are white color. Which I would but I personally like more colorful things. So let's create some materials for them. Balls. I will press a bit control D. Press two. Oh, you want it brown. I will just drag the material of brown into brown. And we change the color. I'll make it black. Let's make it totally black. And for walls, same thing I can do. Let's change the color of walls also. Let's make it gray. And slightly bluish. Okay. <coughs> so we have chosen this color of the walls. Once you like your color, press Ctrl S to save what we have just created. Now click on 3D again, a sphere, name it as a player. This will be our player game object. Move it to 0, 0, and 0. 
with some word of words that's cool and add few components like rigid body let's create a script c sharp script for moving up here i will name it as player moment this script will help you to control your player as you want I will make another folder for this because it will help me in organizing yeah. scripts. Yeah. Yeah. Slash enter. Now, as you can see, our Visual Studio text editor has been open. We will write our script. Before that, I like to change the color of play also. I press Ctrl D, name it as Clear, drag and drop, and based from this scene, I will make it something. Bluish and purple between most bluish and purple. I will write it again. You can make uh, apply any color to your game objects, that's up to your choice. <coughs> Let's check what happened when we play it once. You can see the ball falls. The reason is because we have added this rigid body component in this, and we have to use gravity. It has a mass, uh, some angular drag, which we want, and gravity. <coughs> and why it stopped at ground? The reason was because both ground and player has this collider player has sphere collider and ground has box collider component in them which will help them to detect the collision and once the collision occur if we use is trigger on like any of the collider you can see the ball falls immediately because what we have done is like we have identified a collider but didn't stop other game object from moving what is trigger is doing let's get out of the play mode and you can see the changes we made they were not they are not present now in the game scene so always remember that when you exit from the play mode just note down the changes what we are making or you can copy from here copy component and paste com yeah paste component values this you can do now let's get into scripting I'll just make some public variables public rigid body rb public load timer uh, f uh, here float means you can write uh, decimal value also and uh, here what f indicates is 
that it is a float number if you don't write it nothing will happen but it's a good practice to write when you're using floats some private variables I'll explain in a minute what are public and private variables x input private see I have not defined whether it's a float or a type variable so it has given me an error basically the computer is saying what what you are ask, asking me to do we have not defined it now so when I write float no errors are there you can see here if you got any errors uh, so public variables public variables are the variable uh, will be the variable or game uh, yeah will be the variables which will which we can see in a unity inspector <coughs> like uh, here mass drag angular drag these are the public variables of this script rigid body a script rigid body has been already created by unity which we are using here uh, this is the start function as it has been written already in the comment that start is called before the first frame update like it will only run once at the starting of your game and update function is run once every frame usually 30 times uh, 30 sorry 60 times a second uh, now rb is equal to get component you can hover over any line which you think what is it or what word I have used so you can just check, hover over it and a text will be written from the documentation of unity we will create two functions like You can write the code in update also, like your form for the code. But I like to accept it for uh, the moments which I use for my players. Mm -hmm. Next, something I will write for. Inside of this template, or like this, take the first what we will do, we will take the inputs from the player or the user who is playing the game. So, we have created two variables here x input and y input. What we will do now, x input is equal to input to get access. Horizontal and one input is equal to input of get access okay. make sure you write spellings otherwise your code won't work there will be no error shown but it won't work 
see errors are not shown but they will be shown while you play the game <coughs> now what we do in our on move function is we add post to the player when we press the horizontal keys or vertical keys from our keyboard so rb dot add post x input comma zero add comma one input <coughs> we have created a variable move speed this indicates at what speed a player player will move so here I will <coughs> write move speed The reason I have created the variable move speed is because when we are writing the script we don't know at exactly what speed we want to move the player. So it's a public variable that's why it's a public variable. We can modify it from a inspector or unity editor. And we call our on move function. In our fixed update, boom. And we are in port. Basically, what we are doing in this script is we are taking the inputs from the player for our x and y direction. It's not exactly y direction, but I it's convenient for me to write a script that way. I like it. Um, we are moving here in Z direction. That blue line indicates Z direction. Z. You can rename it as Z also. There is no issue in that. Press Ctrl S. Give it some time to compile the script. And now, as you can see, here we are able to see a rigid body. Our rigid body variable, drag our rigid body of player and place it here. Also, you can check that our private variables are not visible in our inspector, which I have told you earlier. And what now? Let's click on play. You can able to see like the ball is moving. Ta -da. You have created your first roller ball to move or spear to move in Unity Game Engine. Congratulations. But there is a problem. Like when you will move the ball, your camera is still in one position. And I want my camera to move with the ball. So now let's create a camera con like a script for controlling our camera which can follow our player. I'll name it as camera control. I'll create two game objects. I'll copy two objects. So we need to initialize the position for offset. We need to initialize the offset only once. So we will write in a start function. Offset is equal to transform dot position dot next on our world activate method 
Now let's check what's happening in this case. Uh, what we have given a offset to the player where our camera will be placed. Like after this much distance, our camera will be present. And in update function, we're just calling it again and again. So our camera manages every frame once every frame. Let's go in our movie. We find drag and drop and drag and drop. Now let's check what happened. You can see now our camera is also moving with the thing. But what happens is like I don't like the position of the camera. So what I can do is now I just change the position of the object and X direction around 33 degrees and I get like five degrees. All this stuff like that. See. Now you are able to see the player clearly. Also, you can change the field of view of your camera from here. So, like if I just increase the field of view to 180 degree you can see the result I like to keep it how it is so now as we can control the ball in our maze let's end this uh, tutorial, today's tutorial here